So I am in the doctor's office right now waiting for, I'm actually back in a room waiting for him to come and see me. I've actually been waiting here for quite some time, so I'm expecting him to walk through the door any second. <laughs> and again, I am like not wanting to get caught. Isn't this beautiful lighting? There's a really pretty picture on the wall. Check it out. Let's see if I can get it in here. I don't know, I think it's pretty. Okay, if you're squeamish, don't look right now. You still have the drain. I'm getting about 20 mils out, 20 milliliters out a day. I'm really hoping that he's going to take this thing out of me, but if it's still, I don't know if that's considered a lot or a very, very little amount for the body to be able to absorb. I don't know. I'm almost wondering if I should ask him if I can record what he says because I want to remember everything he tells me. Um, today's the day that I find out hopefully what the PATH report says. Um, the PATH report, the um, what it was he removed, uh, the whole nine yards. So. I'd like to record it. And I feel kind of silly asking him if I can, but. I guess it doesn't hurt to ask. Okay, so um, I'll be back. Do, 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 do. Would you like to know the diseases of the digestive tract? Hmm. Yes. Very interesting. Record it. I'll explain it again. So basically, I removed a, a lipoma, uh, which is just under the skin. That's a benign fatty growth. And then under that, there's uh, the rectus muscle is under that on each side of the midline. It runs up and down from the ribs to the pelvis. And wrapped around that muscle is a tendon called the rectus sheath. And that fluid collection was in the rectus sheath. So it was contained within that wrapping around the muscle, right at the level just above the belly button where we felt it. Now, the... I'm not showing your face, just yeah. so you know. <laughs> the, the cultures... That, that I took of that fluid that we drained um, did not show any bacteria, so I can't prove that that was an infection, but it certainly looked like an infection based on the, the fluid that came out of there. So... Was there an infection behind the... I'm still confused as to what it was that you removed. The big lump and how big it was. Was it like a tennis ball? Yeah, the lump was just under the skin a little bit in the subcutaneous fat. And then the fluid collection was within that rectus sheath muscle, or the muscle that's wrapped by the rectus sheath. So the fluid collection would have been, you know, like this. And it's pushing the muscle down. But, uh, um... Because it was sticking out like half a tennis ball. Yeah, the size of the lipoma, um... It was about eight by six by three centimeters long, so pretty good size, you know, maybe eight by six by three or so. Come in. Okay. So. I think uh, the bottom line is we'll just have to wait and see, you know, 
hopefully the fluid collection won't come back. I put the drain in there to, to evacuate anything that tried to accumulate since then. And then um, with the idea of you know things healing shut so that fluid can accumulate in there. So we want it to kind of scar shut. Now, have you had a lot of drainage from the tube more recently? The last uh, five days or so, it's, it's, it's been a total of 20 ml. In five days, just 20? In the last five days, it's been about 20 ml. Okay, let me see what it looks like here. Okay, that looks real good. And then uh, the, the incision is, um, I just want to see what the incision looks like. You want to yeah. lie down? Sure. Try not to. Make you a movie star or anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should take my shoes off. Oh. It doesn't matter. Okay. okay. So. I've got it pointed towards the wall. Yeah, I'm not that worried about Yeah, the incision looks good. Now, there will be the firmness that you feel there. That will gradually soften up, typically, back to normal. Um, but it can take uh, several weeks. So I think what we can we can go ahead and I'll have the nurse take the drain out and uh, and then just keep that opening covered for two or three days until it seals shut. Um, and then uh, she's gonna put like a steri strip or something on it. Basically, just cover it because I, I don't like to try to close it like we would no. uh, because it, it's more likely to get infected. Oh. So uh, just keep I'm it. Afraid it's gonna be a big dimple looking like hole. <laughs> uh, usually it's not. I mean, I, I, she can close it a little bit with the sturdy strip. I just don't want to try to close it tightly um, because if some junk needs to drain out of right. it, I want it to yeah. drain. Yeah, yeah, well, whatever you think's best. I, so, I'm not that vain, only slightly. <laughs> so, uh, any other questions? Because that's about all I have. So basically, was the fluid encapsulated at all? Did it have an encapsulation around it? Um, yes. Yes, I think uh, there was uh, the rectus sheath contained it on one part. And I think what it was really is the rectus sheath is kind of tight to the muscle. Uh, normally, it's attached to the muscle. And so that fluid collection had expanded a little bit, but basically was contained by the rectus sheath or the muscle on, depending which border you're looking at. So uh, it, it was kind of encapsulated in a way, but it was encapsulated by the structure it was confined to. Wow, that's really interesting. So. Why were we unable to drain any fluid out when we um, tried to do that that one day, drain fluid out before the surgery. You, yep. you were just unable to get get to it and drain it. Um, because I didn't go deep enough, but uh, it was very because it was buried in the rectus sheath. Now most fluid collections that like like this that we would feel would not be that deep, and uh, I think the lipoma that was above the fluid collection made it seem like everything was superficial or more superficial. And so I probably put the needle just into the lipoma and never got to the rectus sheath, which I probably, which I wouldn't have wanted to do anyway because it would have been too uncomfortable for you. And, and then you also risk going into the abdominal cavity and injuring the bowel. So yeah, that's why we didn't get anything though. So there was a lipoma then? Yeah, yeah. But the, there was a bunch of fluid collection underneath that? Yep. Which was possibly infected even, I mean, you just are, are taking an educated guess on, on yes. that there was a lot of, infe that, that there was infection yep. in that fluid. Yep. <clears throat> so, uh, but anyway, hopefully uh, it'll, things will continue to go well and you won't have any more issue with it. So would it be considered a seroma then still? No, a seroma would be a... a a non-infectious or a fluid collection that's sterile, not infected. So I wouldn't call it a seroma. Usually a seroma looks a lot like what is in there. Um, and that, what I drained out didn't look anything like that. So uh, technically I would not call it a seroma. Uh, the most accurate thing would be a chronic abscess. The, um, the last, okay, let's see. I, 
don't make it more complex than it is. Yeah, I just I think I just had it in my mind what it was because of the scan done a year ago. And, and, and they call it a stroma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's there's not a good way of knowing what it is of differentiating between a stroma and an abscess on CAT scan. Now, sometimes if they see air in the, mixed in with the fluid, then they assume it's an abscess because some bacteria produce air. But if they don't see any air, they can't know if it's an infection or just a fluid collection on CAT scan. Okay. So, all right, I'm going to have the uh, nurse come in and uh, take the drain out, and then your primary care... Santa Claus! Yeah. Okay. So I'll send her a letter and kind of update her on, on what was found. Okay? Okay. And then as long, as long as you don't have any significant issues, you don't have to follow up in the office anymore. Okay. So. Well, thank you for fixing me. You're welcome. You I don't have to wear shirts that can, is trying to conceal this awful bulge sticking out. Yeah, the, you know, most times in life, the things that we notice about ourselves go right over the heads especially of men <laughs> we're not very observant sometimes but a lot of times you know what we see that we don't like on ourselves is not obvious to someone else it's, it's amazing how obvious it can be to us and no one else even notices i i would have never noticed that you had a bulge there i don't think you know just i was always wearing stuff to try to conceal it yeah. if i wore like kind of a formed fitting kind of a shirt then I mean, you might have oh yeah goodness, dude, if it was really... like a spandex or a real tight one like that then maybe i would have noticed or but... even sitting down if it wasn't even you know yeah. you could just i could just really somebody yeah. else i guess would probably think it was just you know something else and yeah. not realize that something was odd about it but Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see you then. Thank you so much. You bet. Well, you heard it, folks. I had a whole list of questions, and I left the list at home that I had been accumulating over the last couple of weeks here. <laughs> I left the list at home, but I think that I pretty much addressed everything that I had on that list, I hope. Nurse is going to come in, remove this thing. I'd love to film it, but I don't know. I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> so and what I mean by remove this thing is remove the um, my ball and chain. Hi. Hi. I'm just doing a little recording. Um, I'm going to turn it off now, though. Okay. Okay.